Okay. So, uh, uh, until now in the course, we saw the features of the uh, transmitter, we saw the features of the receiver, we saw uh, some features how to quantify the uh, data quality and uh, last time uh, we also talked about how to arrive at the receiver sensitivity, the power required, the average power required to achieve a certain BER. Uh, and for a given bit rate and from that we can calculate what should be the transmitted power and we also uh, saw the features of EDFA in terms of uh, what is the noise added by the EDFA. Now all this information is good enough for us to put a link together. Now we are talking about the physical layer fiber optic link and let's say we have a given situation where you want to set up the complete link, you would like to know what transmitter to use, what should be the type of the receiver to be used, what is the length of the fiber that can be used and uh, do the, does the link require an amplifier, uh, what is the lo longest length uh, that the fiber, uh, for that the link can support and so on, right. So we are trying to, from scratch we are trying to uh, design a fiber optic link. Now, uh, the two things uh, which you need to do in sequence when you are designing a link is uh, one is the loss budgeting and the second is the rise time budgeting, okay. So you do the loss budget, you do the rise time budget and you are done. That is how the link gets designed, okay. Now let us see how to do this one by one. Now uh, the loss budget is uh, primarily decided by the following. So first you ask yourself the question, what is the data rate to be transported? Let us say your link is between, uh, for instance, the it could be between the server of your computer uh, to uh, another uh, lab which is situated some 100 meters away or it could be a link which you are trying to set up as a submarine network as long as thousands of kilometers. But in any case, before if you are starting to do a greenfield installation, uh, you want to ask first what is the largest data rate that I need to support in the link, okay. How much is the, what, what is the expected, it is not necessary that you have to run with that specific data rate today, but even for futurist uh, designing, you want to ask what is the largest data rate I will ever operate this link. So that is the first information. Now once you uh, fix the largest data rate, let us say it could be 10 Gbps, it could be 100 Gbps, whatever is the uh, data rate for that specific link. The next question you want to ask is what is the desired bit error rate? Is it 1e minus 12? Is it 1e minus 9? Okay. So or is it any number in between? So the second uh, parameter is the desired bit error rate. Once you know the desired bit error rate, you know what is the corresponding Q for that bit error rate. Once you know the Q, you can find out what is the receiver sensitivity that can support that specific Q. So this we have discussed when we were uh, discussing data quality, right. So you have these numbers. So you essentially start from uh, designing it backward. So first you find out what are the specifications that you need at the receiver. Now receiver sensitivity, once you know, you know that let us say P sensitivity is uh, uh, in dBm, you know. Uh, that is the received power for a given detector, the kind of detector that you would have. You, you, you would uh, get a number for how much is the average power that should fall on my receiver so that I can operate at this or the receiver can demodulate this data rate with this kind of uh, bit error rate. Once you know that, the next question is what is the fiber length, what is the fiber that you are going to use, what is the attenuation in dB per kilometer of that fiber. Okay. Then uh, depending on the length you want to ask how many splices are there, I mean are you trying to do a point to multi point link so you have uh, receiver multiple receivers but then there is a splitter here so there is a splitter loss um, or uh, you could have splices somewhere or at some point you, may, you, you can uh, think that okay you can, you can budget for a certain number of splice cuts, fiber cuts let us say. Uh, I will make a link which will uh, let us say uh, can tolerate up to 100 cuts which means that you should tolerate up to 100 uh, times splice loss and so on. So once you have uh, reached the fiber length, the next uh, is transmitter. So you start with the receiver, 
you work backward what is the length of the fiber uh, that can be tolerated and then you say um, so this is like uh, either you say that I have I need to definitely operate for a link link of lengths let's say 100 kilometer so you can find out uh, you know what is the power that is uh, expected at the um, receiver so uh, you so you know what is the p sensitivity at the receiver so you know that you definitely need this much power you have this much of loss so you know how much is the power required at the transmitter or you say that i have a transmitter which can operate only with this kind of power level so what is the length of the fiber that can be tolerated either way right so this is how you go about doing the loss budget now in the, the second important uh, uh, budgeting that needs to be done is the rise time budget. So we'll spend a couple of minutes in understanding what this rise time uh, are we talking about. What is rise time? Now consider a linear system uh, continuing. Let's say you have a voltage uh, which is uh, 1 at t equal to 0 and it is continuing to be 1. This is the input given to the linear system. Now the linear system here is the entire uh, fiber optic uh, communication system. This will, the, the, right now what I am representing in this linear system is both transmitter, fiber and uh, receiver all together. Okay? The point that we are trying to make is the transmitter, fiber and the receiver all together will pose something like a low pass response. We are trying to see that if I give a logical 1 to 0 transition into my system, the system will take some time to respond. It is behaving like a low pass filter and let's say the system response is uh, shown by this line and TR is the time taken, the rise time which is conventionally defined as the time taken for the uh, signal to grow from 10% uh, to 90% of the peak value. Okay. So, you are trying to generalize and give a big picture of how uh, we go about doing rise times. So, if I model the entire system as a, a linear system which is having a low pass response, uh, what it means is that I can write the V out just like a low pass filter. So, I can uh, do a simple RC circuit model. I say that there is an equivalent capacitance and there is an equivalent resistance for which represents the entire RC time constant of the link and I say that my V out can be written as uh, V O which is 1 in this case um, which is uh, into 1 minus E power minus T by RC. This is a simple rise time behavior exponential rise time. So for point 0.1 of this the time taken is uh, let us say uh, 2. So, so uh, so, if your V out is uh, 0.1 V naught, this is equal to V O 1 minus E power minus T1 by RC, uh, where T1 is this and say T2 is this and TR is nothing but T2 minus T1 and 0.9 V O is in a time T2 is 1 minus E power minus T2 by RC. You divide and manipulate and find out uh, algebraic manipulation to find out what is T2 minus T1. So that will turn out to be ln of 9 RC. So you just take the ratio, then you uh, take the logarithm on both sides, you will get ln of 9 uh, RC which is 2.2 RC. It is the rise time of a um, system like this which has a sluggish uh, response. Now, uh, there is no specific meaning to this R and C. This R C represents the time constant, that is all. Now, uh, how do you connect bandwidth to uh, rise time? So, this is a low pass filter kind of a system, and for such a system, the transfer function is uh, 1 by 1 plus j 2 pi f R C. So, the mod of uh, this transfer function uh, you can find out as uh, 1 by 1 plus 4 pi square f square R square c square right 1 plus j uh, 2 pi f r c into 1 minus j complex conjugate of this now bandwidth corresponds to the frequency for which this mod of uh, the transfer function becomes half right so uh, a system with this kind of rise time is supposed to have an h of f uh, the the mod of h of f is uh, 1 by square root of this of course Right. So, mod of uh, HFF given by this which is quadratic, the uh, bandwidth is the frequency at which this, uh, so you have something, you will have something like this, the frequency at which your mod of HFF goes to half 
and that would correspond to 1 by 2 pi rc. This is similar to that of a low pass filter. Now, uh, my rise time I can relate to the bandwidth as tr is equal to, we already said it is 2.2 rc. Now, I can represent this to uh, rc as 1 divided by 2 pi f. So, this is 2 pi delta f. So, this 2 divided by, uh, 2.2 divided by 2 pi, if you calculate this number turns out to be 0.35. So, you get this relation, uh, rise time is equal to 0.35 divided by bandwidth, right. So, what we are trying to say is that if I uh, can represent the uh, response of the entire fiber optic communication system as a low pass filter, the the rise time of my output pulse can be related to the effective bandwidth this way. Now, uh, let us say uh, the next question is what is the required bandwidth in regular digital communication systems. We have discussed this in the beginning of the course. We said that the uh, pulse can get represented either in the RZ format return to zero or the non return to zero format. right? And let us say B is the symbol rate and symbol rate is the same as bit rate for OOK and for uh, BPSK, right. So, let us take for example, a 10 GPPS system, right. Now, in OOK, it means that the on off key, the bit slot is half duration 1 by 10, which is 0 0.1 nanosecond or 100 picoseconds. Now, to support signaling at this rate, the question we are asking is, what is the required bandwidth of my entire chain, okay, the entire system. If I can represent the entire fiber optic communication system as one box, what is the bandwidth of that box? Or if I can represent it as one low pass filter, what is the bandwidth of that filter? Now, it turns out that to be able to support a uh, NRZ format, the bandwidth required is only half of the bit rate. Whereas, uh, for an RZ format, the bandwidth required is at least the bit rate. Larger value is okay, but if the system has to respond to an NRZ format at 10 Gbps, the system requires a bandwidth, the low pass filter should have a bandwidth of at least, at least B by 2, which means 5 gigahertz. Whereas if it is an RZ format, it is actually 10 gigahertz. Okay. So, if that is the case, now we can relate our rise time for RZ and NRZ. Now, because rise time is 0.35 divided by delta F. So, you know that if the bandwidth is greater than a certain number, it means that the rise time should be less than 0.35 divided by B for RZ and double of that 0.7 by B for NRZ. So, essentially what we are trying to say is that if you give in a, a transition like this, to my uh, communication system, the optical communication system, the rise time post by the uh, fiber, the transmitter, the receiver, the entire system should be less than this rise time, which is the time taken for the signal to rise from 10 percent to 90 percent. That should be less than 0.35 divided by 0.35 by bandwidth which is 0.35 divided by, in this case, our uh, bandwidth, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, 0.35 divided by the symbol rate, which is 10 Gbps, which is 0.035 uh, nanoseconds, which is 35 picoseconds in case of, the total rise time should be less than 35 picosecond in case of uh, RZ, if you were to support RZ format, and it should be less than 70 picoseconds for NRZ format. Okay. Now, the next question is how do you find the total rise time? 